The Islamic State terror group made sure 2017 got off to a bloody start, sending a shooter into the Reina nightclub in Istanbul, killing 39 people on January 1st. The panicking people, the blood, the noise of the gunshots, the explosions, that's what I keep on thinking about. But the shock of the deadly terror attack masked a different reality in Iraq, where Islamic State was on its heels as security forces pushed into Mosul, the Iraqi capital of the group's self-declared caliphate. The enemy collapsed in front of us, leaving their weapons and equipment, and ran away after we inflicted heavy losses on them. Meanwhile, Islamic State faced a backlash in other parts of the Muslim world. Tunisians taking to the streets to protest the return of fighters. In the U.S., a new president warned Islamic State and groups like it would face annihilation. We have not used the real abilities that we have. We've been restrained. We have to get rid of ISIS. We have to get rid of ISIS. We have no choice. As part of the stepped-up effort, the U.S. sought to empower anti-Islamic state forces for the first time, providing the SDF, Syrian Democratic Forces, with armored vehicles as they began a new push toward the terror group's Syrian capital of Raqqa. In Baghdad, U.S. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis. Uh, we are going to continue to stand by the Iraqi army, the Iraqi people who are fighting this enemy. Yet, as Islamic State faced more pressure in Iraq and Syria, its influence could be felt elsewhere. In February, an apparent IS sympathizer used a machete to attack guards outside the Louvre in Paris. And the terror group claimed a Palm Sunday attack, killing dozens in Alexandria, Egypt. IS also flexed its muscles in Pakistan and Afghanistan claiming a march attack on a Kabul hospital, killing more than 30. The U.S. response? Dropping its largest non-nuclear bomb on a key Islamic State cave and tunnel complex in Afghanistan. Let me be clear, we will not relent in our mission to fight alongside our Afghan comrades to destroy ISIS-K in 2017. By July, Islamic State's self-declared caliphate was in tatters. It's Iraqi capital of Mosul, liberated after months of fighting. I announce from here to the entire world the end, failure, and collapse of the mythical and terrorist Islamic State. Three months later, rejoicing in Raqqa, as IS fighters fled the self-declared caliphate's Syrian capital. Also in October, a setback for IS in the Philippines, a five-month battle to take the southern city of Marawi, ending in defeat. Yet, even as Islamic State lost territory and fighters, its global reach was felt in attacks on Stockholm, Paris, Barcelona, and New York. ISIS is clearly demonstrating continued ability to pursue its global war, its campaign of attacks in the West. So we're seeing a surge in ISIS activity in Northern Africa, uh, in Afghanistan, and in other theaters such as Southeast Asia. The terror group apparently heeding the advice of its leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, in an audio recording from September. The path to victory, Baghdadi said, is to be patient and resist. Jeff Selden, VOA News, Washington.